Hello lovelies, it's uh, comments time again. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the comments aren't loading properly on <laughs> on YouTube. So I only have a very limited access uh, to comments in order to respond to them, uh, which is a little bit upsetting, but uh, hey-ho. I opened the last few videos individually in the hopes that that would make the uh, the comments more visible I managed to get a few more but um, if you've commented on older videos recently sorry you're not in the running ah oh, well bit of housekeeping um, I've been given another couple of ways to try and contact Dr Weissman though I doubt very much whether anything's going to come of that. Uh, we shall see. Don't know how ill she is. If she's still ill. Uh, what's going on? Whether she'll respond? Um, I guess. I guess we'll find out. But otherwise, I think it's the uh, time to put that to bed. I suppose. Um, go back to normal. Uh, nobody seems to have learned anything. Nothing's really changed um, we've got into this rut where people are just constantly reacting to each other um, lots of people unfortunately gain from this stupid culture war so they're not incentivized to bring it to any kind of end alas so I guess this is it um, yeah got some got some closure uh, got some validation I suppose got something to point at next time someone tries to cancel me or whatever but um, yeah disappointing all things considered uh, the Grim Streams channel has been successfully monetized at the lower level still need watch time to hit the next target um, and I think their calculator is off but uh, thank you to everyone who's been watching you know, old recordings of live streams over on Grim Streams uh, and everything else. So hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get to the next breakpoint, the next stage of monetization uh, before too long. Um, I doubt it'll get to full monetization very quickly, but we're on 650-ish you know, subs over there now. So yeah, not that far to go to a thousand maybe a year maybe two I'm under no illusions over how how popular uh, live streams of tabletop games are so uh, we'll see maybe I'll get the opportunity to do some more live streaming over there or just uh, I don't know make the time anyway moving on to the comments that I was able to retrieve uh, from the last five six days or so on an older video about the Black Sword hack, uh, Beardy Ben says, It's nice to see a review of this. I may acquire a PDF. An upshot of solo gaming is playing something your social group isn't interested in without having to find a new set of people. Also, you don't need to coordinate time and place with other schedules, um, and you can test drive a game to see if it's worth more time or persuading others to play. Finally, if you're an experienced gamer, it's a good way to kick the tires on a new system before attempting to teach your learning disabled and or inebriated friends how to play. Well, that's just players. Um, yeah, so look, it just... If I'm going to sit down and write a story, I'm going to sit down and write a story. Um, to me, these are, these are two different itches to scratch. I do quite often... Uh, run myself through a few challenges, skill rolls, even a combat when I'm reviewing or looking back on a game that I haven't played that much, um, which is a kind of solo play, I guess. But for me, as a games master, the best moments during play are when the penny drops for the players, when my carefully crafted... Um, plot or conspiracy or whatever that's going on in the background 
when they finally realize what's actually going on or who someone is or whatever and that look of shock and surprise and delight on the players faces happens you can't really do that to yourself <laughs> you can't really surprise yourself in that way um However, I have picked up a couple of solo games now because it's worth examining them, I think, even if I don't understand them, just how I've tried to understand the appeal of Powered by the Apocalypse games uh, several times. Um, Single-player games aren't quite as egregious as uh, as Powered by the Apocalypse is in, in giving me reasons to hate them, so I will give it a go. Maybe... I'll do like a session report or two on the channel uh, as I try these things and see what see what happens. So uh, look forward to some solo game experimentation and uh, game reports, I suppose, coming in the medium term. On my Fate Core retrospective, the cartographer leaves quite a quite a big comment. Two paragraphs, not quite an essay, uh, but um, we'll get through it because it's it's interesting. Good analysis. Definitely agree on some points there, especially the dice coming up evens more often than not. When I ran it, it quickly became the case that anyone attempting anything they weren't really good at in terms of skills would fail or not succeed by enough a lot of the time, which the players honestly found discouraging. There was much less of that slim chance for a big win that you might get with a d20. I think it's interesting that Fate gets called a narrative system and listed alongside PBTA because they are both narrative but approach it in very different ways. Fate's narrative agency for the players is almost front-loaded into the character creation, where backstory and setting inform what aspects and stunts you can reasonably have but mostly these will alter how the rules apply to you with bonuses and skill replacements, not how the narrative will go. There are rules for stunts that allow for more agency, uh, but the book almost recommends restricting these with either the fate point economy, spend a fate point to have an NPC be a close friend, or once per session style, so it's limited in scope. PBTA, by contrast, tends to have a broader scope for changes to the narrative, but limited because what kind of changes can be made are part of the system design and not created by the players like in Fate. To me the main difference is that Fate, for all its narrative bells and whistles, plays like a more traditional RPG, that being that you inhabit the character, you do what the character does. Um, most of the story elements and so on are part of your character they are things ways in which your character can bend the narrative around themselves you know main character syndrome sort of thing you know happy coincidence that sort of stuff whereas with powered by the apocalypse you don't really inhabit your character and play as your character you're much more engaged in the meta level um, you are playing a group of authors brainstorming a story and yeah that that's the level at which the game takes place which again you know I'm a writer as well as a game designer if I want to write a book I'll write a book uh, so uh, PBTA weirdly similarly to solo player games just doesn't really scratch that itch for me um that I get from gaming so yeah interesting uh, Judd Goswick says uh, Fate Core is a great game marred by the people that make it I ignored Fred Hicks's nonsense online until it started infiltrating their products now it's inescapable in them yeah it didn't used to be and for all that they were ass hats online uh, rather than evil hats you know you could kind of you could kind of ignore it um the same way you might ignore people on the other end of the political spectrum, provided they make good games, and Fate's a pretty good game. Uh, or was. <laughs> uh, I'm not as much of a fan of the of the newer Fate core. I prefer the older versions or the or the um, different versions that other publishers have made, but yeah, well, I went over that in the review, so I won't go over it again. 
but yeah, the attitude is just yeah, in, inescapable, judgy, um, and it's begun directly affecting the the content of their games. I mean, to an extent, it was always there, right? I think the first thing they ever did was Spirit of the Century, I think. At least that was their big, big thing. And that was a pulp adventure game, one of the few pulp settings that's ever been particularly successful. Game designers love pulps. Players, audiences, people who buy stuff, not so much, <laughs> unfortunately. But even in there, they were kind of whitewashing over history, and that's always been my kind of go-to example of why that's a bad idea. How disrespectful it is to the struggles of the past to kind of paper over them or or ignore them. You know, if you're playing a game set in the 30s and 40s, even the 50s, right? You should reflect the social mores and so on of the of the time. Um, your characters might not fit that mold and might bust out of that mold but that's your characters you know player characters are always exceptional pretty much um even in you know really grim and gritty gritty games you know the the heroes are the heroes they're their protagonists um but i've always felt that ignoring the past to make your game more palatable is a mistake it's not you know it's disrespectful to the past the struggles people had in the past we have some sort of duty to one extent or another to represent the world as it was to learn how far we've come how much better things are um so yeah i'm rambling now but um yeah even going right back to spirit of the century the the problem was there i would say um Knight of the Rose says on the same video uh, I agree with your sentiment on the system I used to be a big fan of Fate someone who likes long term games Fate is ill suited for that also they try too hard to have pretty pros in the book and it gets in the way of playability it's even worse in the Dresden Files yeah so you know that book alright it was A5 but 300 pages Maybe if you scaled it up to normal book size, it would be 150 to 200 pages. Uh, the Dresden Files, if I remember correctly, was two larger size hardbound books. And Fate's supposed to be a simple system. And it had so many permutations and complications that it took us ages to make characters for Dresden Files. I don't think we got to play more than like half a session and I, I don't remember us ever going back to it um what is the point of a simple system when you layer so many exceptions and complications and subsystems over the top of it that it becomes as bad as the most simulationist crunchy system you could ever think of this is what went wrong with big eyes small mouth and tristat right um and there are and there are other examples of games where they just lay a complication on top of it to an absurd degree. Burning Wheel is another one, probably. There's a fairly simple and intuitive dice pool system under there somewhere, <laughs> but but the systems layered over the top of it uh, render it opaque and complex to the point of running like molasses. Um, and for me, Dresden Files was another example of that um, through Evil Hat. Of course, that was before the Dresden Files author got cancelled, and I, I don't know if they're still friends with him or not. Uh, on my video about Candela Obscura and how I review things, uh, Veselinidkov, it all runs together, so it's a bit hard to say or to see how to say that. Anyway, uh, I had a very weird experience with Candela Obscura. You have the woke crowd that creates a world that's so devoid of any prejudice or threat that it's bland and boring and safe. And then you have the woke players who make their rainbow character and then get offended that my character is not impressed by them. Oh, 
You're a strong female presenting young person with unconventional preferences who is out and about dealing with supernatural threats instead of staying in the kitchen? Well, so is my landlady. You're not that special. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, you, you've got to have something to rail against if your character is going to be peculiar in some way, odd, non-average, non-standard. Uh, not normal, though normal is a is a loaded term. Though you know we refer to people disparagingly as normies, so I think it's a bit more complicated than people give it credit for. But uh, yeah, it, it turns out that that doesn't mean much. Um, I've been toying with the idea of uh, writing a scenario for um, Lamentations of the Flame Princess or something called Let's Go Break Things. Uh, LGBT, where you play characters, pre-generated characters, based on various historical uh, gender and sexuality oddities uh, from uh, the 16th, 17th, 18th century, uh, which I'd put them all into LOTFP's sort of time frame and, and, and world, um, and you know, do an adventure based on these ideas right you know, maybe you're trying to break into a prison to to bust out your lovers or, or yeah, something. Uh, but you're against a background of prejudice and puritanical ideas and stultifying and suffocating religion, things like that. Make it the point, <laughs> right? Because that's a far more engaging and interesting adventure than than just total an absolute acceptance of anything and everything. All right, characters are exceptions. On the Tabletop Plus Law Dump video, uh, 28mm RPG left a very strong opinion. Uh, I hate law dumps. I'll certainly do a quick premise, but I prefer the player's interactions discover things naturally through roleplay. Their characters discover things during the game through other NPCs and interactions during the game. Law dumps kill the cool discovery part of the gameplay. If I need to put a premise in front of my players, it's during session zero. A PDF of the common knowledge, no longer than a page, maybe a couple of pictures. Uh, Jim, you could have integrated a lot of this during gameplay. Well, you know, I did a lot of it. Um, but we're running a performance show, a public show over on, over on Tabletopless. Um, and so it helps to educate the audience and trust your players not to metagame too much. And also, Tabletopless is very hard to promote uh, due to shadow bans, accounts regularly being removed, that sort of thing. So by putting videos on my relatively popular in this space YouTube channel, um, and talking about things on my social media without necessarily overtly tipping the hand that it's overtly adult, um, then that that helps draw people to things. Plus, we often have guest stars and people who are entirely new to the games that we play, be they D&D or whatever. Uh, and when we do play D&D, it's my own game world. So it is useful to have a repository of lore in easy to digest relatively short videos for people to kind of catch up as to what's what's going on um so yeah i could do a lot of this in the game but it's it's a performance and so the demands of the game are a little different and demands of promotion are a little different than they might be for your home tabletop game uh on the dungeon drama end cap ten bones says if you suffered, as you've said, and I believe you, uh, then it's not petty to want some measure of justice on them. So the simple thing is you and the rest of us that have watched this bullshit go on for years, we move on. We don't forgive, and we sure as hell don't forget. When it comes to anything having to do with these people that did this, we shun them, stop buying their products, and support the people making good games that aren't malignant assholes. Gatekeep and rebuild. So... Uh, I was shunned I don't want anyone else to be shunned it is 
a tactic that cults use and it is horrible um buying their products if they make good products and you can stomach it you know it's not just the wankers that necessarily work on these products um, there are often good people who are artists or editors or writers who are employed by the assholes um and if you work in this space and you're trying to make a living at it you can't afford to be that selective so i would say more of the comment you left it's more supporting people that make good games uh and that aren't assholes that is, is the side i would i would move on i think white lists are better than black lists um and they shouldn't be political you know if you know someone is genuinely a good egg even if you don't agree with them politically or or whatever then we should have some kind of white lists for for people who we know are good people uh, who need the sales need the help need the promotion that is a far better sort of list to make than people to avoid um it also minimizes the impact of, of making mistakes and condemning people uh, without necessarily knowing exactly what, what's going on. So if you're going to do anything, I would say make a white list and don't make black lists. Don't shun people. It's horrible. Nobody deserves that. Uh, yeah, but, but buy the good shit from the good people. Uh, over on the streaming channel, Grim Streams, go and subscribe and uh, watch some videos. Uh, we played Warlock. And uh, I got shonored, I think, uh, perhaps for the first time. Uh, I didn't watch much of the much of his video, uh, picking over about the first half of the game, but um, I don't think perhaps he, he understands. Uh, I am completely secure about my games mastering style. It's been I've been called one of the one of the best games masters people have encountered. I, I choose to believe it for once and accept the compliment. Um, but these are all one-shots. So there is an element of hand-holding that necessarily goes on through a one-shot because people aren't necessarily familiar with the system and so on. And uh, I don't see any reason not to circle back and allow people to get extra information on things they've observed and so on uh, if it's reasonable for them to know that information um, I don't think I was very forgiving in that adventure uh, to, the, to the players after all they had to retreat from the dungeon and failed uh, largely uh, <laughs> in their mission so yeah Shauna's a, a weird guy I think he's just kind of looking to nitpick and be a curmudgeonly ass um and obviously there's there's an audience for that but i'm just not paying it that much heed zang my own dungeon with blackjack and hookers a very simple and brutal print and fold pocket rpg for killing things taking their stuff engaging with nonsense and spending your ill-gotten gains on ale and whores no copyright or anything. Hack, share, upload. Just link back to me as a courtesy. Available at all the usual places.